Hey everyone, welcome to Big Flick Energy. With the recent release of Glass Onion on Netflix, we were treated to a second film in the Knives Out universe, or was it really the third? You see, Knives Out and Glass Onion share one thing in common, Detective Benoit Blanc solving a murder. No other characters are the same in these two films. However, what if I told you there is a third film in this Knives Out world that share the same character across two films and it's not Benoit Blanc in the third film. Instead, I believe the narrator from Fight Club is also Miles Braun in Glass Onion. Not gonna lie, I kind of felt like Benoit Blanc while making this theory and having some pretty solid evidence, so here we go. For starters, the obvious first point is these two characters are played by Edward Norton. And since the character Norton played in Fight Club was never given a name, we don't have to work around that aspect of the story to make this work. They called him Mr. Durden, but that was because of the twist and isn't his actual name. Otherwise, he would have mentioned it to Tyler Durden when he heard his name for the first time. He would have said something like, oh, your last name is Durden, mine is too. But he didn't make that reference, so he has a completely separate name. Instead, the biggest problem is Mao's personality in comparison to the narrator's. But Fight Club ended in a way where that personality shift makes a lot of sense since the narrator is also Tyler Durden. And Tyler had a much more similar personality to Miles Braun than the narrator did. So once the narrator realized he was Tyler, he became the more confident salesman that was living in his mind this entire time, which eventually led to him selling all the characters in Glass Onion on his life goal and sort of using them to get where he was, especially Andy. Now, why would he take such a shift in his approach to life after defeating Tyler in Fight Club? Remember, he created this massive organization to destroy the financial stability of the country and run the banks into the ground by blowing up their headquarters. Now, this was Tyler's plan. It's possible that if the narrator was never found, he decided to become even more influential, which was why he found this group of friends, which aided in his control of the media world, the political world, and the business world. The narrator took on Tyler's personality and it took him to where he was in Glass Onion. Also, the message of those individuals in his friend group being disruptors feels like something straight out of Fight Club. So this is all nice to make a baseless theory and typically to try to legitimize one like this, you would bring up the same director for both films or the same studio for both films. But in this case, the argument is based on who the directors are in David Fincher and Ryan Johnson. I did some research and these two have been linked on more than a few occasions, but the two I want to mention are these. First, as per the February 21st, 2018 episode of the Soundworks Collection podcast episode on the sound effects of Star Wars The Last Jedi, David Fincher, director of Fight Club, apparently recommended Ryan Johnson, director of Knives Out, to Lucasfilm to make the film The Last Jedi. So evidently they are friends to an extent. Secondly, Ryan Johnson himself stated David Fincher predicted Knives Out in 2011, speaking about Fincher's 2011 film, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, where Christopher Plummer is the head of a devious family and Daniel Craig's character is sent to investigate them. Sound familiar? It should, because that's the exact plot of Knives Out. Not to mention in the main room of Miles' estate, we see an array of art pieces where the room's most eye-catching showpiece is an oil painting of a shirtless Miles, which Edward Norton himself describes as Miles in Fight Club as painted by Francis Bacon. So there is evidently a link between the directors and I would not be surprised if Ryan Johnson sees David Fincher as a mentor, so he wanted to connect his mentor's film to his own. And it's possible this is why Norton was brought in as one of the main characters for Glass Onion. Now, in my opinion, this actually makes Glass Onion a much better film if watched as a spiritual sequel to Fight Club. It doesn't really change the viewer's perception of who could be the murderer as the narrator could have been perceived as a protagonist or an antagonist based on the viewer's perception. It instead gives us an added background to Miles Braun's character and makes his defeat at the end of Glass Onion that much better through the symbolic imagery of fighting fire with fire. His legacy started with a fire and ends with a fire as his house catches a flame in an eerily similar way to the buildings at the end of Fight Club. I'm also a huge fan of stories where the protagonist and antagonist can stand on their own in a project. So this added feature of Miles being the narrator grants the character that added level of intrigue. 
So I truly do believe Glass Onion to be a spiritual sequel to Fight Club based off a very similar main character, director relations, and how it improves the story of Glass Onion in numerous ways. Whether it's true or not, we'll have to wait and see. But hey, that's just a mystery. A Knives Out mystery. And cut. Thank you, Film Theory, for the idea of how to end this video.